supporting you in your dog parenting journey. The Dynamic Dog Owner with Debbie Potter. Hello and welcome to the Dynamic Dog Owner. If you have been following us for a little while, you will know that we are part of a dog training school, Potter Paws Dog Training, based in Buckinghamshire. You can connect with us in many ways. Obviously, listening to this podcast is a wonderful way to get to know a little bit about us and to build your training knowledge. But there are also many other ways that you can engage and interact with us. You can follow us on social media at Potter Paws, P-O-T-T-E-R-P-A-W-S. You can head over to our Facebook group, Potter Paws Dog Training Community. Uh, it's a group of like-minded dog lovers, all there to share information, benefit from each other, boost each other up. Our trainers are in the group every day, providing information, answering questions. It's a lovely community to be part of. So today, this episode, we are going to be talking about one of the probably most important things we can do for our dogs. You may have already been told, been aware that a dog's strongest sense is their sense of smell. So their ability to sniff completely outranks us and many other animals too. Dogs' noses are pretty unique and it is amazing how much they really can sniff. It's hard for us to put into context how much they get from sniffing and how much information can really be downloaded. The way we can liken it is to us seeing a pretty view. If you've ever sat on top of a hill and overlooked a town or an expanse of land and really sat and watched for a while, you'll pick up so much information. You may be able to see birds and animals. You may be able to see roads and houses and animals in fields and distant motorways. Um, you may be able to see a train line, lakes. If you sit and really look, it's amazing how much you can really take in. If you were to then try and write a list of absolutely every single thing you could see, it would probably take you a little while. That's what happens to our dogs when they sniff. They don't see the world in through their eyes as much as we do, but they gain all of that information and that much just from sniffing a smell. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sure we have all been in the situation before where our dogs are sniffing and we go, would you just stop sniffing and hurry up? We need to get home. We're in a hurry. It can't be that amazing. It truly is. When your dog is sniffing the ground, they aren't just having a sniff and trying to find a pea spot. Obviously, they could well be trying to find a pea spot. Um, but they aren't just having a sniff. They will be gaining so much information on what's been happening in that place. Who's walked past were they interesting? When did they walk past? What's different today to yesterday? What changes have happened in this spot? Now, if it's people and dogs walking past, particularly dogs or other animals, they will gain a whole host of information about that animal or that other dog that has been in that area. And it's not just a case of, oh yeah, there was a dog here. They will be able to find out so much information like their age, their breed, um, whether they're healthy or not, what kind of character they have, all from sniffing a sniff where another dog has been. Potentially, if it's their we, um, it's going to be like information download. So when our dogs are busy sniffing, think of it like you on Instagram, Facebook, um, Google, when you're trying to find out information, you sit and scroll. If you meet a new person, um, or you want to find out information, you do a Google search and you find out every single thing you want to know about a topic, a person, a place. Um, it may be you know, you're trying to choose a dog training school and um, you would research them and find out everything you need to know before you even consider working with them. That's the same as our dog. When they're sniffing, they're gaining and downloading all that information. They're building a picture of their world finding out about what's in it and deciding whether they are interested in that thing or not. Now, you may go, well, that's nice information. Lovely. They have a good sniff and they find information. But well, how is that useful? Dogs' noses are capable of detecting, as we've said, so much more information than ours could ever imagine. So how does it help them in the real world? Sniffing has a number of benefits. 
There are studies that say around 40% of a dog's brain is dedicated to their sense of smell. So when they're sniffing, they are using and utilizing nearly half of their brain. So it's really mentally stimulating. The more dogs use their brain and use their nose, the more mentally tired and satisfied they are. So if you've got a particularly over exuberant bouncy dog, if you've got a young puppy who can't exercise too much, if you've got an elderly dog who's you know maybe not able to do as much physically as they could, sniffing provides more benefits, in my opinion, um, to actual physical exercise. Getting a healthy balance is the key. Obviously, our dogs need to physically exercise. They need to go for walks. They need to run. But having a good combination between your sniffing and your mental enrichment and walks is what creates your happy, content dog that's going to make your life so much easier. So yes, it's going to help them be more content and more, not tired, because that's not necessarily the right word, but more satisfied. Think of it the difference between you running a marathon or you sitting and doing a crossword or a logic puzzle. Both are tiring in very different ways. And that's the same for our dogs. If we only ever run and we never use our brain, obviously we're not going to have a very healthy balance in our life. So letting our dog sniff provides that contentment. Sniffing also, as we said, helps to build up their knowledge of the area. Why is that useful? Why is it useful for a dog to know what's in their area and build up a picture of their environment? Because it helps them to feel confident. Just like we would walk into a new environment and look around and suss out, well, that's where the tea station is, that's where the toilet is, that's where this is, that's where the exit, right, okay, I feel safe and secure here, I know where everything is. Our dogs benefit just the same from sniffing. It will help them build confidence in their environment, in themselves. And if it comes down to other dogs, if they're always sniffing a particular dog each day on their, on their walk and then they meet that dog, it will feel like they already have a sort of understanding of who they are. So it will build their confidence in social situations as well. Their confidence is so important and there's so many reasons why, obviously, just being aware of their surroundings, obviously, is going to build their confidence. But when they're sniffing, it activates certain parts of their brains that help boost positive emotions. So when dogs are sniffing, they are feeling good. It makes them feel happy. Some studies say that, and I think this one's pretty cool, that a dog's optimism is raised when they are able to sniff. So they feel more optimistic and have a better outlook in life when they are sniffing. You can always class it a little bit like um, a mindfulness activity. Nowadays, people will, um, you know, we all like to do things that are good for our, our mental well-being and something for ourselves that makes us feel good, whether that be going to a spa or going for a walk in the countryside or sitting and doing some colouring or baking, whatever it may be. For dogs, many dogs, sniffing is the alternative. So sniffing gives them that mindfulness, mental well-being that obviously helps enrich their lives and makes them feel good. So yes, there are many ways that we can integrate sniffing into their lives. We can create situations for them to sniff. So for example, undertaking activities like scent detection or tracking or playing some games at home where we hide treats. But what about sniffing on a walk? Do you let your dog sniff on a walk? It's one of the things that I personally prioritise when I am out for a walk, the most important thing is that my dog gets to sniff and to lead the way almost. So something that really bugs me and it's something I, I really get passionate about is when I'm, I see dogs not being able to sniff. There is no reason why dogs shouldn't be able to sniff on their walk. You've probably all seen it. Maybe you do it. And if you do, you know, hopefully you'll see a little benefit to maybe not doing it on future walks. But when people are walking along and they're in a hurry, their dog gets a good sniff and their dog's yanked away from the smell. Because I think as people, we tend to see that uh, our walks are measured in how fast we went, how far we went. And sort of the stamina side of it, of it's how many miles did I walk? Oh, I did five miles in 20 minutes, which is probably like completely unrealistic unless you're running. Um, but that's how we measure a walk. 
So we tend to go, let's take the dog around the block. Let's do it quickly. Whip them around the block. Five minutes. Come on. Quick frog march. And round we go. Done. Dog job done. But is that fair on our dogs? And I would say it's not. We tend to think that, I mean, many people expect their dog to fit into our lives. And it's not fair, quite frankly, if we have a dog and we don't let it do the things it naturally needs to do. Our dogs have to be able to display natural behaviours to be happy, content, relax and have a good life. So we have to meet them in the middle in many ways, not just in sniffing, but in in all aspects of life. There is a definite clash between what we expect uh, as a dog owner saying, I've got a dog in my house and I expect this, this, this and this. But we have to take into consideration what our dog's needs are. And we can't expect our dog to do all the changing and all the compromising. Um, I remember at my wedding that we had a speech about how compromise was the, the main part of a good marriage. You know, you, you have to meet in the middle and if you, you both have to compromise your own parts. And that's the same for your dog parenting journey. You have to make compromises. So you have to compromise some things. Your dog may have to compromise quite a bit. You know, dogs naturally would like to be outside a lot of the time and we tend to keep them in our houses um, because naturally we don't have time because we're all doing busy stuff. So we have to make sure that those times we are walking our dogs are the best times possible for our dogs. So one way we can do that is giving them an outlet for that natural behaviour, which is, of course, sniffing. If we go on a walk and expect them to heal, it's unfair, it's unrealistic, it's not fair on them. But taking them on a walk and letting them sniff is going to be... Yes, it may mean your walk takes a little bit longer, but it is going to mean that your dog has a better experience and therefore your dog is going to be more satisfied from their walk. So it's kind of a weird saying, but don't measure your walk in miles or minutes. Measure it in sniffs. So when you're out on a walk, let them sniff. Let them stop and sniff every blade of grass if they want to. If you only go 100 yards up the road, but your dog has sniffed for 20 minutes, they are going to be more happy they're going to have so much information. Their brain's going to be tired. It is more enjoyable for them. It's just like them going and sitting on a hill and watching everything, taking it all in. That's going to be better for them than quickly walking around the block for five minutes. Because they're gaining information. They're processing it. They're having to use those natural skills. You may find that not just they stop and sniff something, they then start tracking and tracing a sort of pattern of smells. So we don't see it because obviously we don't see with our noses, we see with our eyes. You can't see scent trails. So think about um, sort of everything that walks on a piece of grass. If you were to like measure a piece of grass, like 10 meters squared or whatever, in the middle of a space, and over 24 hours watched how many things walked over that piece of grass. You've got people, you've probably got bikes, you've got cars, you'll have birds, you might have um, foxes, rabbits, insects. You may have people walking past and then dropping stuff. So many scents are going to be in that area. And our dog will be able to smell it all. We don't see it. It's invisible to us because we simply cannot use our nose as well as our dogs can. <laughs> but your dog is going to be able to smell every single thing that has gone on in that area. And they're likely to want to follow it. Just like going back to before we domesticated them, how they would have to follow tr scent trails and track an animal to survive. It's a natural instinct. So they're naturally going to want to follow smells. So they're going to put their nose down to the ground, sniff, 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 and start following from left to right, sometimes going quickly, sometimes going slowly, following that scent trail to see where it takes them. If we go, no, you're pulling, you mustn't do that. We are taking away natural behaviours and then that creates an unsatisfied dog. So it is a little bit of a sort of balancing act really I suppose as to how do I let my dog do the sniffing and not pull me on the lead and that's where sort of I think sometimes there's a lot of confusion so I'm going to let you into my rule my secret that I have with my dogs um, it's not really a secret because I tell everyone about it but um, it's my rule and it's a very simple rule and it's if you pull me to get to a smell 
then that's not allowed because pulling we know doesn't work guys come on you know we've worked enough on on lead pulling that's not allowed so you're not allowed to pull me to a smell if you happen to get a smell you're allowed to follow it so if my dogs are walking along nicely next to me and they put their nose down and they start sniffing i stop i pause and i wait and then i follow them they become the leader of the walk they're going mum come this way there's a good thing here and i let them lead until they're finished with that smell and then i become the leader again and say right we're going this way now if they get to a smell we do the same thing okay now it's your turn to lead so we're taking it in turns it's a partnership it's not me marching them around the block and saying you must walk to heal the whole time because that's not fair now, what happens if they want to desperately get to a really good smell, a smell that they can't possibly ignore, and it is out of reach, they want to get to it? Well, that's when we work on a little bit of, if you engage with me, you get what you want. Sometimes, not always. <laughs> um, so we have, again, another rule. If you get to the end of the lead and there's something great out of reach, you have to come and ask me for it. So turn around, engage with me, and show me we're connected. And then I will say, okay, let's go sniff it. But pulling won't get you to it. So it's a little rule I have. And I kind of imply it, employ it all the time, even as puppies, you know, um, that if you find it, we can follow it. But don't pull me to it. Because I don't want my dogs obviously pulling me around to every smell. So it's a little rule we can put into our walk to make sure that our sniffing is being allowed and we're having opportunity to sniff. But we're also still working on our lead work. Now, for me, lead work, as you'll know if you've listened to many episodes, is one of my passions. I absolutely love lead work. I find it the the base of everything. You know, if you haven't got good lead work, then everything else is difficult. If you have got lead work, then everything else is just a little bit easier. So for me, lead work is one of my top skills that I work on from day one. And I think, again, kind of where we have to meet in the middle a little bit, and this is all about meeting in the middle, you know, we have to give our dogs a certain amount so that they get to be free, is that we tend to always walk really slow. (laughs) And then every smell is out of reach. If your dog is getting a good smell, follow them at quick pace, run along behind them. From an outside point of view, I often think that people must think my dogs are pulling me down the road. Um, They're not. I am choosing to let them sniff and I am trundling along behind them because they've got a really good smell and I don't want to interrupt that. Now, when it comes to things like tracking, so firstly, let's talk about a few things. There's three different, three main, there's so many ways you can use scent work, but there's three main sort of sports for scent um, activities. One is scent detection, which is basically dogs finding or knowing a scent, searching for it, and then telling their own they've found it. So it's a little bit like your drug sniffer dogs you'd see in the airports. They walk around, they wait until they get their scent. When they find the scent, they tell you it's there. You've then got tracking, which is dogs following ground disturbance. So just like tracking an animal that's walked along a field. So probably the most natural, I would say. You've then got sports like man trailing or like search and rescue, which is where pe- where dogs... People hide and dogs have to air scent to find them and then get their way to them and they find the person. So there's three kind of main sports. Um, For me, tracking is the most natural. I love scent detection as well. I've not done too much man trailing um, or like search and rescue work, that kind of air scenting um, following. But um, it's something I'd like to do. It's on my bucket list. Um, It's not something I've had an opportunity to do too much of. But the others I have, and for me, tracking is the most natural thing we can do with our dogs. And often satisfying a need. So if your dog does desperately want to sniff absolutely everything on your walk and you do feel like it is completely a one-way battle, tracking will help you. Because we're giving them permission to sniff. We're giving them permission to do that thing that they really want to do. And therefore, we satisfy a need. What? often becomes a problem is when we constantly say no you can't do that no you can't do that no you can't do that no 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 no. you can't do it naturally the dogs want it more i think the same goes for people as well though if there's someone with a load of chocolate and they say no you can't have it it's all mine you naturally want it a bit more (laughs) so 
giving them an outlet, so something like tracking, gives them the skills. They learn how to track. They learn how to use those skills. You learn how to handle the lead. And then what I personally do when I'm out on a walk and my dog finds a smell is we go into tracking mode. And I say, okay, where is it? Let's go find it and let's, let's sniff it. We then use the lead. He knows on that cue, you are allowed to pull me towards this smell because that's the game. That's the game we know how to do. So we can use that in our walks to make sure our walks are as enjoyable for him. And equally, I don't feel like I'm being dragged around because I know we're now into tracking mode. I know the game. He knows the game. Let's do it together. So I think it's obviously scent work, scenting, scent work in general is amazing. If you've never tried it, I would highly recommend it. But letting your dog sniff on a daily basis is so important. You're naturally going to, as say, have a calmer, calmer, happier dog. You're going to have a more content dog if you let them sniff. But I think also it kind of builds into why are you going for a walk with your dog? Most people, we call it, I'm going to walk the dog. As if it's a chore. And let's face it, sometimes it is. You go, oh, I've got to walk the dog today. I've got to walk the dog again. And for me, one of my dogs doesn't wee in the garden, so I have to take him out like five, six times a day. That is definitely a chore. Um, <laughs> but... We don't say I'm going to walk with the dog. Whose walk is it anyway? You know, why are we going for a walk? When If you didn't have a dog, would you be going for a walk? You may enjoy a walk, but would you have to get out every day? Would you have to go out twice a day? So remember that your walk that you're going out on with your dog is the only time your dog gets to go out of a day. Unless you're going to training class or something else, but... Let's put that to one side. So how long is your walk? Half an hour? 40 minutes? An hour? That's the only time your dog's getting to display natural behaviours. No wonder they want to sniff. So consider just whose walk is it? Ask yourself, why am I going for a walk? Is it for my benefit? Is it for my dog's benefit? Now, if you are actually trying to walk for a purpose, I would suggest don't take your dog with you. Because what we often try and do, and I think everyone does, me included, we try and combine two things. So, oh, I've got to go and take the kids to school. So I'll take the dog with me. Two birds, one stone. Brilliant. I've got to go and deliver this to somebody's house. I'll take the dog with me. I've got to go and collect the car from the garage. I'll take the dog with me. But naturally, you're in a hurry. You are then focusing on walking and walking quickly. Your dog's missing out on the sniffs. They, you got annoyed with them because they want to do what they want to do. So it doesn't necessarily kill two birds with one stone. It may feel like it, but you you generally then tend to not do either job properly. So personally, I would say, unless your dog is blimmin' amazing and is, you know, chilled and happy and, and it works for you, separate it out. Don't take your dog on the school run because you're going to be stressed managing your kids getting everywhere. Um, Your dog's not going to actually enjoy their walk because they are just going to be frog march down the road going, come on, we need to get to school. We're running late. Um, Or, hey, I need to get to work or I need to do this. Come on, hurry up. We can't we can't facilitate sniffing here. You then get annoyed. Your dog gets annoyed and it doesn't go well. So. Better if you're wanting to walk for exercise or for a purpose, whatever that purpose may be, do it without your dog. Unless you have the time to let them sniff and let them do the things that they want to do whilst you are walking. Generally, speed equals less sniffs. And therefore, our dog is not going to enjoy their walk as much. They're not going to gain as much for it, from it. And it's ticking a box yes well done you've walked the dog but is it having the maximum benefit on your dog's life and your dog's day as possible probably not so remember our walks are for our dogs we need to meet them in the middle we expect to go for a nice walk and our dog to walk beautifully by our side all the time in a heel position it's not realistic it's not fair dogs need to sniff so let them have that opportunity Create your own rules while you're out on a walk. A bit like I have my rules of when you are and aren't allowed to get to sniffs, the pulling won't get you there, but this will. That way, your dog's going to have the best work possible. 
and you're going to actually enjoy your walk with your dog. If in doubt, just think about that sitting on a hill and taking in all of the information that is around you and consider that's what your dog's doing when they are sniffing. Let your dog sniff. You'll have a happier life, your dog will have a happier life and your walks will be so much more beneficial than if you don't. If you haven't tried any sniffing activities before, there are so many available Look up one in your area and give it a whirl because it is so much fun for you and your dog and it's a really nice way to channel that natural behaviour. Majority of dogs absolutely love it. Whether it be tracking or man trailing or scent detection, whichever one you pick, give it a go. Often it's something you can then carry on at home or out and about in real life as well. Now, if you have any questions about scent detection, scent work or anything about sniffing or any questions in general, head over to our Facebook group, Potter Paws Dog Training Community. The link is in the description and feel free to ask us any questions. And I can't wait to see you in the group and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thank you for listening to The Dynamic Dog Owner with me, Debbie Potter. See you next time.